Hello pilots and welcome to another video. This is an, a little addition to the video from yesterday where I showed you how to tune your artificial horizon in INF correctly so it matches the rear horizon no matter how the pitch angle is. And in the comments of the last video I was asked about the FR Sky Pixel OSD because there are some settings different and now in this video I want to show you how to do that there too. And also I will show you what's the difference with the settings in INAV 2.6 and 3.0. So first of all let's connect to the configurator and switch into the OSD tab so I can show you a few things here first. The configurator still shows you the OSD items as they are in the classical OSD so we don't have a real-time preview of the Pixel OSD. And uh, that's why I will show you here the DVR so we can see how it looks like in real. In the Pixel OSD, the sidebars here are automatically replaced by Pixel elements that scroll very precisely and also show these boxes with uh, selectable values on them. And in the center of the screen, you see the artificial horizon uh, that's set up as a line in my case and also the craft icon. At the top of the screen you have the compass and the home arrow. These are usually pixel elements as soon as the plane is moving because it needs a direction vector. With the compass enabled that would be the case already on the bench. But now these are just shown as placeholders on the rear OSD uh, because we don't have direction data yet. The default setting for the artificial horizon is the pitch ladder with the degree values on each marker but I will show you that later. First we look what settings are available here in 2.6.1 and for that we type in um, the CI command line get AHI and get horizon so we sh see all the old settings and the new settings that came with the Pixel OSD. In INA 3.0 this is a little bit more sorted so most of the settings are collected in the AHI um, name order. Here in the first line you see the AHI style setting. In this case this is set to line so it's only a single line like on the classical OSD but the default value is the pitch ladder with the values on each marker that shows you uh, constantly how much pitch angle you have in a graphic array. And just for just to show it to you, I will set that back to default now, but of course we need to do that with the set command. And then also we will enable the border, the horizon border, that shows you a box around the horizon uh, to give an indicator in what area your artificial horizon can move and will be shown. And this helps you to orientate your other OSD items so they don't overlap. What's also possible on the Pixel OSD is to set the height and the width of the artificial horizon area and that's also where the box is helpful to have a idea or have a preview of how big it will be. And the setting the AHI vertical offset uh, sets the horizon center line above or below the center of the image or of your camera feed. This is not tied to the crosshair in this case compared to the classic OSD so you can set a manual offset if you want to. To move the crosshair up or down on the screen to compensate for camera angle you still need to use the OSD horizon offset value in a plus to minus two range. If you want to have it higher then you set minus two. But this, as this will not move the artificial horizon up or down, you have to adjust that separately then. And with this value, OSD sidebar horizontal offset, you can move the scroll sidebar bars a little bit more to the center or further to the edge of the screen to get more space for either your surrounding OSD elements or for the horizon itself. For now we will now save and reboot and then we can see the changes we have made. After the reboot you see here the artificial horizon is now the pitch ladder with the 15 or 10 degree step markers 
and also the bigger center line and we have also the horizon area box around with these corner marks where we can estimate how much room the horizon will need. Now at this point we can use the AHI width and AHI height setting to make the available room for the horizon a little bit bigger in height and width of course. We will set the width now to 150 pixel and then have a look at the uh, distance between the horizon box and the scroll sidebars after we have saved and reboot the settings. And here you can see the horizon has now more room to move and we have a better overview and this can also help to see it better and to estimate better how your uh, yeah, how the plane's pitch angle or roll angle is, especially in case you fly in fog or clouds or whatever gives you a bad view. But now you see what can happen actually. Uh, we have now an overlapping between the uh, horizon box and the system messages at the bottom. So we get some artifacts and uh, blinking when the system messages are shown. So it makes sense to keep the box as small as needed to have no overlap with other OSD elements here. And now I show you what the horizon offset does. As you can see in the live preview, we have now two crosshairs in the center of the screen. That's because the old crosshair is not removed automatically. It has to get a full OSD refresh at this point. And uh, after we save and reboot again and the horizon or the OSD gets refreshed, then we will have one crosshair further up on the screen. And this is to adjust for camera pitch angle. But also here you need to be aware of that the horizon sidebars in the vertical direction will follow the crosshair. They, these are tied to the crosshair, but not the artificial horizon itself. So you have to adjust that separately, un unlike the classic OSD. In my case now, this messes a little bit with my OSD layout, but I will move that back to normal later. At this point, let's switch to INA 3.0 and then I can show you the differences in the settings, although most of the settings are exactly the same, just with different names. Now on INAV 3.0, we go to the CAI again, and then I will type in again, get AHI and get horizon. So you see the difference that we only have two settings now that are, have the horizon in their name and all the others have switched to OSD AHI as the name scheme. You can also see I have made some little changes back to my normal OSD I use uh, just to correct for the overlapping. So I have uh, reduced the height down to 140 pixels here. And this way we don't get an overlap or flickering anymore. Yeah, I hope you liked that video and if yes, give a thumbs up. If you have any questions as always, put them in the comments and we we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.